So this is the U Green NAS. I saw their booth at CES and was really interested in checking them out. I've seen some of the other Synology ones, but I like to see others in the whole space. Now, of course, you could build your own thing to do the Unraid deal and you can get exactly what you want, but sometimes having pre-built ready to go is just nice, especially if you don't wanna to go to all the trouble. So that's where this comes into play. So this is basically their four bay NAS, and it just takes four 3.5 inch hard drives. Now they did send this for review. Of course, no additional funds were exchanged, and we do keep it unbiased. And they did send the four drives. They sent four red, four terabyte drives, a bunch of fours there. Now the caddies are pretty easy to open. You just hit the little button on the back and it just slides down and then you can pop the drives straight out. I don't close it again. And that's pretty much it. You wanna pop your drive in, put it in the caddy and that's it. You don't really have to put the drives in any particular order. As you saw in my community post, I had the two and the one switched around. No, that wasn't to trigger a bunch of people on having them out of order, but I was just trying some rebuild options to see how it worked. So let's jump into looking at some of the additional features along with what you can do on the bottom, the back, et cetera. We'll jump on over to the desk and check it out. Now, of course, if you just want to jump around, you'll find all the chapters down below and you can jump to exactly the part that you if you're not familiar with these, these NAS or network attached storage, it's basically at home cloud per se, but it's your own cloud at home instead of in someone else's server. And then you're not, you know, throttled down by the bottleneck of your network and data caps, the whole thing, it stays in your home. And then because there's multiple drives, you do have redundancy. So if like one dies, then of course it kind of chugs along, maybe a little bit slower speed, sends you a notification, and then you can swap that drive. It rebuilds and gets the redundancy back up to what it was in case another drive fails. So that's kind of the basis of like raid boxes. And of course, we've done the whole Unraid thing where you build your own thing. This is all gonna be ready to go. Now, I'm not gonna go over all the crazy features. The software is changing, you'd be bored, and I'm sure you're ready to go watch some Cletus McFarlane or Mr. Beast videos, right? So basically, I'm gonna take all this out so we can get a lighter box. The way this is designed, is of course there's just a little magnetic looking screen that goes on the back of here it pops around the back and we'll show the back because that's where the party's at right so what they have is they have hdmi and it is up to 4k we'll go over that in a little bit you got some usb a ports now the cool part is you've got 2.5 gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet on this model. And then of course the reset, in case you forget your password, don't do that. And then the power input. On the front power button, you do have to hold it down for it to go off. So it's just barely bump and it's not gonna go off. You got all your LEDs for your hard drives and also your network. You got a, a micro SD slot in the front, I guess that was that full SD card slot. And then you've got USB-C and another USB-A for external storage, I guess for like plugging in stuff for cameras. Then down in the neck of this beast, those are just, you know, the little backplane board for the hard drive. And then back through here, it just blows air through it and that way it cools off your drive. There's enough gap in between them to really, you know, keep things cool. Now the cool part is, show you on this one, is the bottom plate. So now it's starting to look like a computer. Let's turn this around. You get your memory slots in the bottom. So this one's coming with eight gig of DDR5. Right here, you do have, you'll recognize that, that's two NVMe slots. So you can do additional things with those. They do give you some cooling pads to stick on top. That way it dumps the actual heat from the NVMe over to the top plate. So pretty cool feature there. So we'll put the drives back in. Let's jump on over to the software side. So at the time of the recording of this video, it, yeah, it's not launched yet. We did get a pre-review of probably, I guess, because we stopped by their booth and showed some interest in it. I'm glad they contacted us afterwards because I like to do cool products like this. Now, 
I did get the DXP 4800, I think it is, plus. They do have, mine's a four bay as I showed. They do have a six and an eight. I wasn't part of the cool kids to get these over here. I know all about the Kickstarter thing. There's especially if you were in the whole NAS thing, that that product that was like the store Mac, I forgot what the name of it was. How do you not realize that was not fake? Uh, that's a whole different deal. But I don't know why U Green's doing this, but U Green has been around a while. I would expect them to, you know, continue to actually do the proper thing here. You've probably seen them a lot of cables and everything and chargers. And yeah, I'm rambling on. Let's talk about some of the um, features here. Now, of course, they're going to talk about the biggest one here. So I'm going to scroll right on down to the specs. I've got this model here in the middle. And now they are showing 419. And I hate to talk price a lot because things definitely change. But I did compare it to some other models. And you know, the, the big model that you're going to see it kind of looks like on some things it's pretty damn competitive. I like to see, you know, things this, you know, in this space that they come through and do competition. Competition's good for me and you. It brings down the prices, especially we need that these days. This is the gold Pentium 8505 that's actually in mine. It's not too, too bad, but then, then as you go up, you'll get like the 1235U and everything. That's kind of some of the like mobile processors on like the i5s and things. Does support all these different RAID versions. I know if your eyes glaze over, you can Google them or they even have a helpful little thing which we'll go through. Um, so that does have the two ports and yeah, all the different other models, you can see they just start to step up in things. And I will say they're reasonably priced for an all-in-one box like this. Now, the only side thing I guess you're going to get is you're not going to be able to control the software and make it totally yours. But some people don't want to do that. So I understand that, that they just want, you know, to press the button, slap some drives in, and it's on their network and they do their thing. Well, this is going to do that. Before we jump into the interface... See this little whale here? That's the same little whale, Docker. That's what really interests me when I saw their product at CES is they're talking about all the different apps and it's all one mobile app. That was one of the issues I had with Synology. Yeah, I, I did say it. Um, is there was like so many different apps. It was confusing. Now, with that said, I don't have the app yet. I did ask for it and it's just not ready yet. So maybe we'll do some additional things and talk about the mobile app. Really like to see that. But the Docker thing is not ready yet either, unfortunately, because I, this software is evolving. And but I wanted to do with Docker was like load Home Assistant on it, load MQTT and Zigbee to MQTT, make it like home automation things, put Plex on it, different. You know, that's really what ultimately these NAS servers are for is like, throwing all your media on it and like maybe run Plex and then you can watch all your, you know, your licensed media all across the world or whatever from this one box. And hopefully it'll be ready by the time you're able to get to see one. Now I've logged into mine and put my user on here. This is using just Chrome. So there's no like special app you need to install. I don't even know if they have a PC app at this time, but I did nuke mine for the sake of things. I wanted to try out and show you guys what it does when you slap all the hard drives in it. I tried it with two, three. I wanted to see if like I could make three number three fail and then put on number four to repair it. It does all that and repaired everything just fine. I, I, I couldn't break it in that aspect. So when you come in here, it's really, you know, self-explanatory is, and I'm going to see if I can zoom in some of this stuff because I know some people watch on mobile. Maybe that might be a little bit better. So really when you come in here and use, it's pretty point and click. I mean, there's no command line stuff, but I will get to a command line. You can do that if you like. And now it's gonna say, hey, I'm creating a storage pool, which ray they walk you right through. If you don't really, you're not interested in of like which one's which, just think of, I've got four drives. I know math is hard, but four times four, that gives you should around 16 terabytes or so. So I'm going to pick this for RAID 5. It's going to ask you which hard drives. And I'm going to say all four. 
And I'm not going to do the hard drive test. They're new drives, so it just takes longer. Um, next step. Now, I thought this was pretty hilarious. They sent these drives in a special Ugreen box, and it says it's not on the compatibility list. I'm guessing they need to update that. But I see other competing ones do the same thing. It's just a little warning. Hit continue. Now, there we are. You can see we got almost, you know, 12. Now you drop off some, but pretty much what that tells me is I can have one drive fail and then it, I can still continue on. And as long as two drives don't fail, but that's where you'll start to get back. If you notice when you go to previous and say, I want to say, I, I want to go over here and hit raid zero. Let's say, I wish they had an all option. And oh, it, it actually shows you here, estimated capacity 14.5. So you can just go through here like RAID 10. You don't have to go to that next screen. Maybe that changed in one of the software releases because they've been changing this quite a lot. You can see it's 7.2. So just do the quick math on it. You can see that it's just going to, you know, it's the, the amount of redundancy that you have in things. I'm not going to go into the whole raid ones. You can just go read about it, all the different raid till your heart's content. So we'll hit continue. I'm going to leave it as the full capacity. Now, one thing I would have liked to have seen if we had like ZFS, but I guess you don't have ZFS. So we're going to get butter FS. I'm going to roll with their recommended and hit next step. And then we're going to hit complete. Now it's going to format. Yep. We're going to delete all the data and it's going to ask for your password. I do like the design that they don't, you know, you can't just accidentally go delete everything. So it gives you the little stuff up here. It's creating the pools. It's showing it's in sync. Yeah, it's in sync, right? <laughs> I'm sure we're going to have some B-roll about in sync. So sorry about that, guys and gals or whoever. And so we got our volume. It's normal. It's showing that we have, you know, this almost 11 terabyte drive now. Now it shows... You know, you're going to have some use for the formatting. I know you start to just keep cutting stuff off, but uh, you can probably thank some Bill Gates stuff with that about the whole what equals a megabyte. I'm not going to go through every single freaking setting in this whole damn thing, but it's point and click. It's pretty damn easy. You can go through details. You can see all the different smart information. You can see the serial numbers everything on each individual drive. It's pretty damn cool that this is all just built in here. And I keep finding more and more stuff. Now the external storage, remember all those USB ports on the back and everything? Well, yeah, that's cool. You can plug in all your stuff, but do keep in mind, it's not going to add into the RAID, you know, the, for the redundancy stuff. It's just going to allow you to access your storage over the network. I did plug in like USB caddies, even SATA to USB drives and popped in stuff, everything just seemed to work without any issue and it popped right in and I could see it on the network. So pretty much that's it for making your drives. Now, once you come in here, you got the apps and you can come through and install all the various apps in here. So I'm gonna hit all on here. You got file manager. Um, I thought they, they, they do away with some in the latest updates. Hmm, interesting. They did away with some of the apps that I was going to talk about. These software is ever evolving, I guess. And maybe we'll reboot it and we'll see if uh, the apps pop back in. But you just click on the apps and they do install. The one I was looking for was the video center one. And that's going to let us watch stuff through the HDMI thing. And um, we'll see if it pops up, if I can get it to on this guy here. There's also the photo one I wanted to look at. I'm not seeing the photo app either. So this is pulling up SMB straight from Windows computer. And I went in to the straight to the IP of it. It did ask for my user ID and password. I can see there's my backups folder. Just to make sure, I wanted to see if I can make a test document. Yep, I can see it there. And then if you come in here, we can go, we can see in the shared folder, backups, and we should see that test.txt. Now I'm curious to see how quickly this thing lets us write a file. So here we have a 50 gig file. We'll drop it in here. The reason why I wanted to try a big file is I wanted to see exactly 
if it runs out of buffer, if it's just buffering it to like, you know, RAM, that would be kind of cheating. I'm sure it does since it is Linux. But I want to see what it did once it ran out of that particular buffer. This is going from an NVMe on my local desktop over through the switch and then over to the device itself. So I expected like 250 megabytes a second. That's about average you're gonna get for 2.5 gigabit. And it is going bumping up and down, you know, as it goes through and writes to the drives. Now, if we wanted to look over here, you can actually see the actual things over here showing how many megabits and everything. You actually can come in here and go to task manager and you can jump in here and go to hard drives and you can actually see what's the hard drive, you know, speed total. Um, you can actually pick which one. So they have tons of different stats. So you can actually see what it's doing. It's stripping that data across all those drives at once. So you do get that performance. You don't need like that cache. You know, it's just going to put it across all those drives at once. So we don't have any issue of, you know, these four drives getting bogged down too much. Well, I would say that, but there's a little up and down. So we're getting around 200. And this is bumping up and down. Let's see if we can look at the network. Network download 269. So we're still popping around 200 for all the way to the end as it bumps up and down. So that leads me to, yeah, the question of would you buy one? Probably it really depends on, do you want to build your own thing? Do you have time? Do you have the expertise to build your own thing like we did in the previous video for like our big Unraid build? Um, if you don't want to do that, you're looking for something ready to go, that's just take it out the box, slap some hard drives in, and then you can throw all your storage, you know, pictures and media and everything on it and not have to worry about software updates and all that junk. Probably something like this is for you. This isn't the only one out there, but I did find the prices pretty damn good on these. And um, hopefully the software will eventually catch up. I've been seeing several updates to this over time. So definitely keep an eye out on this one. They do have their little Kickstarter out here, all their different models. If you want to dig through all the things, definitely do so. You can find all those links down below. I do appreciate you watching this one. If you got any other questions or comments on this one, definitely shoot me something down because I'm sure this is so many different features. I'm probably missed something and the software keeps changing. So I do appreciate again, you green for seeing this for a review. And yep, y'all know the drill. Press all them buttons and y'all take care.